Well, hey guys, it's Sandy Alnock, and I'm going to be Bible journaling today, inspired by the My Creative Bible. It's one that I don't use very much. It has all the drawings in it and stuff, but most of them are just text, like lots and lots of text. So you can color lots of little letters, but there's not much. There's a few pictures in there, but not much in terms of pictures to color. But what I decided I was inspired by was these. They do a couple of these throughout the Bible with large words in blocks, and then they draw something behind it, whether it's lines or doodles or vines and, you know, grapes and all different kinds of things they put behind them, which is kind of fun. But there's also one that I saw that really got me excited when I saw it because it had all these intertwined ribbons. And I thought that was really beautiful and it would be fun to try. So I'm going to do this one and I'm going to give you some tips along the way. And then I'll tell you why I chose to do for the first time in forever. I have never Bible journaled the Ten Commandments, any of them, much less the um, bearing false witness against your neighbor one. And I'll tell you that embarrassing story in just a little bit. But what I started off with was printing out the word truth from my computer. I just picked a font that I liked and made it the right width. It's not quite tall enough by the time I got it to the right width. So I'm using the top guideline and the bottom guideline of the block of lines for journaling that are in my Bible and just stretching them out a little bit further. So I'm adapting the letters and I'm trying to move the verticals on the letters so they align with the vertical lines, which are actually horizontal lines if the Bible were sideways. Um, but it, it just aligns them so my lines are kind of straight that way. And I did fancy things like making the R cross over the U and that sort of thing, stretching it out a little bit. So you can adjust from a very plain font or you can take fancy things off of a fancy font to make it more plain. My recommendation is don't go too fancy because if you're going to do what I'm going to do with it and add anything to it, trailing through it, then it's going to get real confusing really fast. So keep it also, whatever word you choose, do it with few letters. If it's five or six letters, that's plenty, because otherwise it gets really confusing. So with my pencil, I'm going to make a couple of swirls down the page through the whole thing. Just starters for me. You don't have to do this. You could um, just start with the pen, or you could go in with the pencil and do all the, the work that I'm going to be doing with the pen and making the thing weave in pencil and then you don't have to think as much with the pen. So I went really slow so I could do this with the pen and make you know, like pick a section and then make the ribbon and give it some width, give it a, a second line and go in front of one letter and then go behind the next letter. And for some of them I'd start to draw the letter in just a little bit so I'd remember that that one goes in front and then the next one goes behind and the next one goes in front. And if you end up missing one and the ribbon goes in front of two pieces or behind two pieces, it's no big deal. Just, you know, making them flip back and forth under and over and under and over and then give the ribbons different widths so they get skinnier and fatter and kind of alternating because that sort of makes it look like the ribbon is twisting. If they're all the same, then it'll kind of look like that flat pasta, whatever that flat pasta is. But that could also be interesting. You could also make waves this way. This could be waves running through the water or something. It'd be kind of interesting to do, do it that way. Just be careful of any l parts of the letters that are required in order to read the letter as the letter. So if you whack off, you know, the bottom of the U, does it still read like a U? Or... Is it better to put the ribbon behind it if you need to see a part of it? So think about that part as you're kind of weaving the, the ribbons in and out. So I'm just going to let you watch while I do the, the drawing portions on this. And then I'll come back with a little more of the discussion of how to color it when we get to that part. But I thought I'd tell you my embarrassing story where the Lord led me back to the Ten Commandments and to this verse about not bearing false witness against my neighbor. It started about a year-ish ago when I had posted a meme. I had just hit the share button. A friend of mine posted a meme, and it was something political. It said there was a piece of legislation passed in some city, some ordinance that said such and such, and there was this woman who said this quote about it, and 
all of that meant that she was evil and this legislation was terrible and it meant that whole community hated God and especially this lady. She was the ringleader in hating God. And I clicked share because, I, of course, I want to defend God, right? <laughs> like, isn't that what we all think? And it stuck with me for the longest time. It was a couple hours later, I found myself on the internet looking up that community and the legislation because I thought, boy, if that legislation said half of what they said in that meme, then it, it must be really bad. I'm going to go see if I can be even more mad. And I, I have to admit that was a really bad thing to be thinking that I wanted to be more outraged, but, you know, I'm human as well. But what I found when I looked that up was that none of that was true. The legislation didn't say that. This woman didn't say that. She was a church-going believer. And somebody else had just said this. They just made it up out of whole cloth. There was someone else who said something similar to that on a completely different issue. So whoever the originator of this whole thing was grabbed a whole bunch of disparate, unrelated elements and put them into one meme just to get everybody mad. And boy, did it work. It suckered me in. And I had a long, really kind of knockdown down drag out with the Lord about this because I was mortified when he told me I had borne false witness against my neighbor. I felt so awful because... For a long time, I hadn't really thought about, like, some unknown politician who I will never meet in another city across the country. Like, she's never going to know that I bore false witness against her, but she's still my neighbor. And here I did this without even thinking. I would never do that to my next-door neighbor or to someone in my Bible study or to someone in my family, and yet I didn't think twice about doing it to a total stranger. And that just, that took a lot of just working on the interior of me to to start to really try to peel that out and figure out what it is that caused me to, to do that. But through all that process, the Lord and I kind of worked out a system that I was only going to post things that I could own. And by that, I mean only things that I had typed out the text for myself, none of this copy and paste if you love Jesus stuff. I was not going to share memes unless they were like silly frogs saying TGIF. (laughs) But none of this other stuff that was purporting to be facts. And that I had to do my own research. I had to look into things and find out if they were really true before I could post anything. And that, for the most part, meant I had to be really, really, really interested in it to post it. It cut back on a lot of my Facebook time because I don't have that much time. But what I have found is that I have learned a lot more about the world around me and how to pray for the world around me. I know more about communities that are in trouble and need the hand of God and I can pray for them. I've learned more about politicians who are doing great things and I can pray for them to have strength. I mean, I've learned so much by doing my own research instead of just believing everything that comes across Facebook. And it's, it's just been a a eyes wide open kind of crazy thing. I've also discovered, and this is not a political statement in any way that politicians lie. That's just what they do. And I'm not talking about just the other guy because we all think, Oh, the other guy always lies. Like my guy lies. I, I, there's, you know, people that I like, and I find myself fact-checking those people, and they shade the truth. Some shade more than others, some shade less, but everybody does it. That's just what they do. Their, their job is to get you to like them more than you like the other guy. So they try to make the other guy look bad. So I've started now paying attention to both sides. And I want to find out what both sides say about themselves, and I don't pay as much attention to what they say about each other. Because they're not going to tell me the truth about that. Some people don't want to look into politics at all. And I envy you because I just like it. I like knowing what's going on in the world because I like praying for my world. And, you know, different people are called to different things. And this is just one of those that, that God's given me enough passion about that I, I want to pay attention to it. But 
you can find the same arguments going on about the virus or about the economy or about jobs or about fashion or about raising kids. I mean, everything is divisive. And everything requires truth and not slander against our neighbors. So I I challenge you, if you'd like to take this up, to look up your own information when when it comes time for things that get you outraged. Because that's usually when I find myself just really wanting to click that button quickly because I'm mad. And that's, that's for me the big signal that somebody's telling me a mistruth when they're they're just working hard to get me worked into a frenzy. So let's get back to the art now. The coloring on this, the words, I wanted to be golden because truth is golden. And I colored it with two shades of yellow, a darker one and a lighter one. And these twisted ribbons that are going in and out. Originally, I thought it would be fun to do something with you know, bright, sunshiny rainbow colors. But the thing that is really trapping truth and trying to drag truth down is much darker than that. So I wanted these grays to just be icky with the truth shining through nonetheless. Because the truth is not always easy to see. It's not easy to find because all these lies wrap themselves around it like noxious weeds. And we have to cut those away. We have to bear down and find the truth. Same in scripture. I mean, we need to get to the the nuggets in scripture and not let sin get in our way and not let false preachers get in our way. We we need to know the truth of scripture. And it being gold and shiny through this, I think, says a whole lot in this particular Bible journaling page. The darker color that I'm putting in here, the black, I'm putting the shading behind each of the letters so that the part of the ribbons that are coming in front of the letters are lighter and then it gets darker before it goes behind. And then if there's two ribbons right next to each other, I push one of them back. It doesn't matter which one, just push one of them back by making it darker, letting the other one be lighter. And then it seems to pull it to the front and and get that separation, that dimension in between it. Now, as I said, you can do this with a lot of different words in your Bible like whatever word comes out at you from the scripture. Again, reminding you, use something with fewer letters in it. You know, if it's five or six letters, that's more than enough. If you try to do the word beautiful, then all of these little ribbons are going to make that unreadable because it's just too many letters to try to make all this twisting going on. But you can use the same technique for printing out a word and tracing it into your Bible and just keeping that one simpler. If you're going to use a longer word, just don't put as much of this little stuff in it. But it's kind of kind of a beautiful technique to do. I might try to do this sometime with water flowing through the word this way. And coming in and out of, of each of the letters might be kind of beautiful. So anyway, that is my post for today. I hope you enjoyed my nice embarrassing story. And my little technique for tracing a word into your Bible. And adding some ribbons intertwined in and out of it. I will talk to you guys next week. Take care and go out there and be light and truth in this crazy world around us. Bye-bye.